Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom, and on today's show, I am meeting a jewelry designer that, I, I put an emphasis on the word there, didn't I? Jewelry designer, that's like I'm an announcer. Um, a jewelry designer who is here in Madison and uh, not only designs jewelry, but bought into an existing jewelry business to do bulk orders and wholesale and I want to ask about that because I don't know a lot about wholesaling. I don't know a lot about doing bulk orders. I know how to do one-offs and I know how to kind of get rid of the stuff that I have but never prepare for like a large order. This person bought into this jewelry business that already existed right before the pandemic happened. So we talk a little bit about how that transition happened uh, and how she dealt with it. So we talk more about um, kind of running a business, being a designer and actually doing a lot of large orders. Also, don't forget to go to my website if you're hearing the show for the first time, tomraiswebsite.com, and you can follow the podcast, check out previous episodes. I talk to all kinds of different artists, so you can do that there. You can also check out some of the vlogs that I do about selling my own stuff here and the pop culture things that I collect online to help pay for all this. Anyway, here is today's episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast starting right now. and the owner of Metric Four Studio here in Madison, Wisconsin. We um, design and sell jewelry that's locally made. So, and we we sell it nationally too. We actually wholesale it around the country. You you do. Yeah. I saw that on your website. Like there's there is a where you can buy it, and I saw on the map, and I'm like, I don't recognize that place. And it said, get directions. I look, and it's like, oh, it is in another state. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. How, how did you, well, first of all, okay, I'm not going to get right into the wholesaling thing because I want to get into, I was looking at the bio on your website and it's, it says that it was one company, then another company, then you bought it. And it, yeah. so tell me the background of this. Like I was, I, I sort of followed on the bio page, but, um, but yeah, explain that to me. How was it, how was it two companies and then you bought it out and it's what it is now? Okay, so the company has been around for 20 years, actually probably a little bit over 20 years. And I purchased the company um, about six months before the pandemic happened, actually. Okay. Fun little fact. <laughs> and so um, timing, interesting. Um, and so so basically it was September of, you know, so like a, over a year ago. So um and I actually had worked for the company for a short period of time. And then oh. um, I had owned another company here in Madison that um, people who have um, younger kids probably would know about because um, I sold art kits that we created. Um, so I, I did that for a long time. That was about 15 years ago that I started that. And then I closed that. And then I bought, I purchased this business because I loved owning a business. I loved creating a product, designing a product, and I love selling it. And this business happened to be very similar to what I was doing before as far as designing a product, wholesaling it, and selling it nationally. And um, it was here in Madison, so that was a good fit for me also. And basically what we do is we design jewelry and we have a metal studio. So we actually do the metal etching and we actually hand punch the metal pieces. So we actually make our own components to the jewelry. Um, but we do buy a lot of stuff too. So I would say I figured it out and it's about 50% of our components. We actually make ourselves here in Madison. Okay. And then all the earrings are made here in Madison, handmade one at a time. And is it mostly earrings or is it different types of jewelry? Like what kind of stuff do you make? So we do have a hundred different styles of earrings that we currently sell, but we also have um, necklaces and we have bracelets that okay. we do. Um, I actually just designed, actually at the beginning of last year, I just designed about 30 necklaces, but the pandemic happened. So I decided to put all those on hold for a year Right. and I actually just finished all of them priced them all. And, um, those should be out very soon. So we'll have 
necklaces, which we haven't had in over 10 years, new necklaces. Oh. So, yeah. Like you sold out of them or you just stopped selling them or what happened? Well, basically they they designed them over 10 years ago and they just never, they kept selling them, but they're the same old designs. They haven't updated the the necklaces in a long time. So that, that was a really fun project and I'm super excited about it. Okay. And are you in a storefront or are you in a house? Like where, where do you do all this business? Um, so we have, I call it a little earring factory that we have <laughs> okay. here on, on East Wash. So the business has been on East Wash on the east side um, for 20 years now. And, um, and then a lot of the earrings are made by contractors. So we actually put together little packs of earrings and they make them at home and then they bring them back to the office. Really? Yeah. Was that something the previous business had started? Yeah. So that's actually why I was super interested in the concept and the business because it had a really cool business model to it. And it's something that I could easily scale up and make more of. Um, And then I also love the creative part because I love to, I love every aspect of business basically. And I always said that I love art and business equally yeah. Because I feel that business is incredibly creative and what you're doing is solving a problem, just like an artist is solving a problem. They have an idea in their head and they want to create it, right? So it's solving a problem. So to me, I think art and business are the same thing, basically. And so I get to design a product and then I get to produce it and then I get to sell it. So for me, I just love that whole process of of those components. And then sometimes I have to do stuff that's not so fun, of course. <laughs> you right. know? Like, and so, but the, but for the most part, I, I enjoy that process. And how do you find the people who make the stuff and bring them back in? Like it, it, outsourcing it like that seems, yeah. How do you, how do you even sell somebody on, on doing that? I guess what's the concept of having these people do these and uh, at home and bring them back in? Well, we find other artists that are, you know, love to make things. Uh And so, and they want to have some work on the side. Um, Both of my, I used to have six employees um, a year ago now, almost Uh exactly a year ago, right? Today. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I had to let those employees go. And then I was able to only bring back two of them. So my two very part-time employees that work from home now, um, they're both artists themselves. My bookkeeper is a photographer and she has her own side business. Mm-hmm. And then my metal artist, she has her own business on the side too. She um, cuts metal pieces and little shapes and sells them online. So, um, and then we used to have, we probably had about six different artist contractors um, over a year ago. And we, we kind of had to let them go because we don't have as much work. So Um, I find making earrings very relaxing. So I like to do that in the evenings or on the weekends. I'll make a, I kind of do the simple ones. And then I have our metal artists do the more complicated ones. Um, She tends to be a little more patient (laughs) with making the earrings than I can be sometimes. And um, yeah, so we actually, we're really well known at the Willie Street Co-op. We sold our earrings there for forever, it seems like. And so a lot of people know the two brands, Imagine and Eclectic Earth, mm-hmm. but from finding it in those stores. So, and then we actually sell to Whole Foods uh, around the country. Oh, wow. um, yeah. So we sell like to the Madison Whole Foods is one of our bigger stores too. They've been selling our earrings forever and we sell, you know, lots of them there. Did you acquire the, um, the image or I'm sorry, what were the two different types um, that it was? The- The two brands are Imagine Imagine. and Eclectic Earth. Yeah. Did you acquire those when you bought it or were those the pre, was that the previous owner's name or how, how did, how does that work? Um, So I'm actually the third owner um, of the business. It's been women owned. And so I bought it from um, the previous owner who had bought it from the previous owner who started the company. And those were her two brands that she had started. Yeah. And then, each one of us has kind of improved the business, you know, mm-hmm. improved the brand, improved the product. So it's, it's a, evolved, right. Yeah. From when it first started. So, um, you know, there are people who have lived in Madison who have probably seen the brand evolve, you know, the packaging kind of change and the, 
the product change and and so that's pretty cool too to kind of watch that process. Had you done wholesaling before? Was there already wholesaling in the business? Because I I just realized I've never really yeah. looked into wholesaling and what that entails. So if you, could you tell me more about how that works? Yeah, a lot of a lot of artists will ask me about that because that's kind of the thing. It's 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 almost a very separate type yeah. of business. Right. You know, because selling a one off of something, uh, but then duplicating it. So it'd be sort of like if you did an, a piece of artwork and then you had it printed and you did then you did 300 of them. And then you took those and you took them to an art gallery and said, hey, I'll give you this for nine dollars. And then they sell it for 18. Mm-hmm. So that's what I do. But with earrings. So, you know, I come up with a really cool concept and then I make um, several hundred of them. Yeah. And so that's what I liked about the business too, because they already had these accounts at Whole Foods and, um, you know, hundreds of other stores around the country, like gift shops and stuff. So they already had those accounts. And I had experience selling to wholesale accounts too. So for me, it was a very easy fit because I understood the business. It was a great concept. I, I could easily, um, just I easily just stepped in and kind of, you know, took it over. And, and I also just find it really fun and interesting, too. I get to talk to new people every day, you know, around the country. I get to go and sit in a studio and do some design. I get to sit and just relax and make earrings. So it gives me a little bit, you know, I do some social media, um, you know, sales calls, you name it, Mm -hmm. you know, variety of things. So if you didn't have those wholesale uh, things set up when you bought the business, like what are some, cause you said you had done it before. What are some ways that people, like if people wanted to know about wholesaling, like how would you advise that they even go about it? Like what are some tips I suppose? Cause I'm I'm really Um, curious to see how this works. Like, I mean, you already had it in place, but it's like, yeah, "Yeah, but how? (laughs) Well, I was, I was actually just talking to a friend that I had met at a trade show in Ohio and I was talking to her on the phone and um, and she ha- she has a jewelry business, too. And so she was saying to me, like, like, I don't know how to get started. Do I just walk into a store? And what if I go to a store and they already have a bunch of jewelry? And I said, well, um, the best way to look at it is when you go into a store, look around and see what they have and see if they have a, a hole in what they're not selling. So say you go into a store and I could probably do it something more related to what you do. Like say they sell um, collectibles, Mm -hmm. but they, but they don't have any collectibles of like um, superheroes, you know, they're, they're missing that. And that's something that you sell. Then you, that's a great way to pitch the store be like, Hey, you know, I'm making all these um, soup. I have all these superheroes and I'm doing, um, I have a whole collection and I can sell you for them for a better price and like wholesale them to you. And then you could sell them for a different price. So it'd be, so, so that's how I would look at it. That's how I would start. Okay. Um, the other good way to start is to, if you say you, um, you were an artist doing, you know, creating paintings and, and you had, five paintings that you or the style that you kept doing and people really loved it. Um, I would take the top five sellers and then maybe take those and print them on a, a um, note card, you know, and then sell it to a store that way, because then at least, you know, like people really love that style that you're doing. And mm-hmm. so there's, a, and so you can tell if there's a market for it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, Because the problem is you really don't want to invest a lot of time and energy in a product that where it doesn't have any traction in the market. Right. So you Mm -hmm. kind of want to test it. Right. And see. So you could even do that by making just three copies of something and selling it to that store and seeing if it sells well. So that's kind of the that's the simplest way to get into wholesaling. Yeah. You know, you could also work with um, getting a sales rep too, and somebody who goes out and tries to find you accounts, or you could go to a trade show. Yeah. And so, 
Well, and you now could. you used to be able to go to a trade show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now they they do have virtual trade shows, and so I'll be doing. I've done a couple of. Well, I haven't. I've done a couple virtual like gift shows, and so I'm going to do a trade show soon. Um, really, where have you done those at? Yeah. So there was one, um, I'm part of the Wisconsin Women's um, Business Association. Okay. And they had like a holiday virtual show because they usually have um, a holiday event every year where people can come together and kind of, you know, celebrate each other and um, in all the work that the organization has done. So instead they did it all online mm -hmm. and then they had a little shopping um trade show kind of thing after and that was so fun and then and people it's like this where you're on a video and people come into your store and then you can talk to them like what platform was it on it was a whole separate platform oh. for virtual shopping yeah okay. i can't i can't remember the name it, i always but. wondered too when you said people could come into your store it, you made me think and i'm wondering if anybody did this but if you were doing it on mobile, you could actually be in your store. And if somebody popped up on the video, you could actually walk them around like they're in your yeah. store, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. That, ju yeah. that just occurred to me. I don't know if anybody did that or not, but I'm like, that's what I would do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the future is here. <laughs> exactly. Well, and one of the things you had mentioned too, the the second one that you had mentioned about doing a couple and bringing them into a store and seeing if it how well they do that's kind of that's one of the reasons why i sell these things is so i can test out theories like that and yeah. also so i can learn different platforms in different marketplaces and see which ones work better so yeah. i've been doing that kind of thing virtually but that's the thing too is i'll i'll just sell it online and see what platform it does well on and then it's like oh well i need to get more of those and one of the things recently has been illustrated books and I'm like, okay. okay, well, oops, where am I here? So I'm going to get tons of books then. And that's, and yeah. I've kind of upped it on that. And it's like, okay, now I look at that and go, what can I do artistically on my own that's in this same realm? So I've been using all these things and also because I enjoy getting them, <laughs> but I've been yeah. using them to test out different markets and different platforms. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. if I'm doing my own thing, I can't do it in bulk. I can't do it. I, I don't have things that I can reproduce as easily by myself. So okay. yeah. the first one though, the first thing you were talking about, about finding a hole that's in the store's inventory, that that's an interesting point. I really like that. What stores have you done this for before you acquired this store? Like you, you said you were in business for yourself. I forget what you said. You, you were in business for yourself before you got this jewelry store. Yeah, um, I, I had started a business called Artero. It was, um, we sold little, we called them eco art kits. They were little art sets where you could make art projects and they're, they're designed basically for kids or like families to make art together. Yeah. And our concept I thought was pretty cool. Um, they're, they were open-ended. So, um, you know, it's just, it was really a, just a really free play, free form type of art as opposed to like paint by number. Oh, okay. Thing, I gotcha. You know, and we use really high quality materials. And so, so that owning, like starting that company and running that company, I really learned so much. And then um, it was the same business model that I have now where we designed the product and then I wholesaled it around the country. So I knew so much about trade shows and sales calls and, you know, uh, marketing. And so, you know, on and on and on. So um, pricing, you know, a big part, if a big aspect of wholesaling product is coming up with the right price yeah. for the product and for the market. One of those things too is uh, it depends on the materials. So with both of those, they're very material intensive. So where do you find your materials and how do you find the things that you use? It's, uh, um, let's uh, with the let's with say with the jewelry right now. Like, where do you find the material for your jewelry to use? And like when you're designing, uh, clearly you have to go. Well, I'm going to use this type of thing in the jewelry, and you yeah. have to find out where you're going to get it. So, how do you do that? Yeah. yeah. Well, luckily, you know, somebody else had started the business, so um, you know, I I hmm. could learn from where they were buying stuff in the past, and and. Um, you know, and kind of go from there. But, you know, we, there are tons of different resources online, you know, including places like Etsy, 
you know, finding yeah. products. Um, you know, there we do order some products from like China and stuff like that that we have shipped to us. Um, but at the same time, like we really try to make as many things as we can ourselves, as many of the components. Mm -hmm. So we we actually order big sheets of metal and then we etch it. Oh, um, so okay. I don't, I don't know if you know that process. No, but, no, not at all. That's kind of why I'm asking because I'm I, I know nothing about making jewelry, and, okay. and so I'm I'm really curious as to how it's done. I just it's one of those things where I look at it and it's just kind of like it's just like it just became that way. I like I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you actually see my earring, this is a good example. Um, so we get we'll get a big sheet of brass we stamp it and then there's like this etching solution. It's kind of like an acid that you dip it in um, and take it out. You let it dry. And then you, then we take it and we put like a patina on it mm -hmm. and then we, we punch it. It's punched out like hand punched out and then, you know, punch a hole in the top. And, and sometimes we kind of put it in like a little machine to shine it up. But um, you know, so we actually made that piece. Uh -huh. And um, instead of like some big factory across the seas making it, you know, and mass producing it with the machine, it's actually been done by hand. So what happens is each time you buy an earring like this from us, they're all very unique, like a piece of art. And how long does it take, as opposed to uh, doing it in a factory, like how long does it take you to make more than one of these? Oh, wow. Um I mean, we probably make, we make batches of them. Uh -huh. So we probably do try every earring is different. We probably do about like 120 at a time. Really? So, and each process is going to take, you know, either, you know, a half an hour to an hour to do. So. And yeah. you would have to, in doing that, you're saying you buy it in a sheet. It's kind of like if you were, oh you would need to like plan out like what's the most efficient way we could go about these and make more than one of these. Right. Yeah. So exactly. does that involve like, a? how do you map something like that out even like what, what's some, give me an example of like what a process for say, okay, we're going to like the earring that you're wearing right now. And yeah. you were going to make like a hundred of them. How would you, yeah. how would you figure out the process for making that? You don't just go, well, let's cut a bunch of circles and see how many we end up with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's one of the things where you have, um, you know, you work with a metal artist, somebody who has experience, you know, you using the materials so that they understand the correct process to do it in, mm -hmm. you know, it's similar to any type of artist who they know, you know, if you're going to work with charcoal, you want to work with this type of charcoal, you don't want to work, just grab some coal on the side of the road, right? You want to work with like, you might. Right I don't know. <laughs> you might. But you're going to get a different, it's going to be a different process yeah. and you're probably going to get a different product. So it, it, it's all dependent on what you're trying to make. So, um, you know, we, we actually do, I think we do like brass and copper and nickel silver. So we do have a couple of different metals. And then of course, you know, I, I think for me, what's exciting is you could, it's, there are unlimited possibilities you know, of what we can make, the style of earring that we can make. And so I think that, um, you know, when you start working with the different materials and you start seeing what you can make, it you start to learn, you start to go, oh, I could do that, you know, and then you then you try to push the boundaries, right? And you try mm -hmm. to see, oh, could I make that? And then you try it and you're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work, right? Right. And so you go back to the drawing board, you know? Huh. And so where you make the earring and you're like, oh, that looks terrible, <laughs> you know? So I, I think it's just very, very similar to using any other media, you mm -hmm. know, where where you just kind of see what is possible, see where the boundaries are, try something new. And sometimes you go forward and sometimes you go back, back yeah. again, you know? Well, I'm curious too. You, you made me realize like, even when you're trying something out, like there's a thing uh, for me specifically, and I'm wondering if maybe this is a thought process that goes through your head as well when you're making it, but I'll do a drawing. And like, sometimes I know that this is going to be a character I'm going to have to draw over and over again. And it's yeah. like, 
I need to find a way that I go about it where I'm like, okay, this way I don't have to reference back to the original material. I just know that I start with this part and I swoop it this way. And, you know, and I'm going to basically, I have an order that I do so I can just draw the character from scratch, even though I'm reproducing it as a drawing. And with that, right. when you're making it, are you going like, okay, if I did it this way, that's going to take 10 times longer unless what if I cut it around this way or, and, and I'm just generalizing cause I don't know the process, but do you, do yeah. you try to keep that in mind? Like try to future proof jewelry as you're even testing it out or trying to design an idea? Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, some of the parameters that we have to work with in our price, mm. you know, we have to keep it under a certain price. And so, so we know how many pieces, you know, depending on the size fit on a sheet, because our sheet's always the same size. Mm -hmm. So, and then each time you do something to the metal adds a cost, you know, it's just like the longer you draw something, work on a piece of art, it gets more and more expensive, right? And yeah. so, so you have to think about that when you're designing that each step is going to cost more and more and more. Yeah. So, or, you know, this is actually the largest piece that we usually cut out of, um, you know, out of a sheet. So because it's so large, we're using a lot of the metal. We probably don't want to do too many things to this piece because it's already going to be expensive as opposed to if you had a little dime size, mm -hmm. you could do more to that piece because it's going to be less expensive you know, because of the, you're using less material. So would size actually be a different cost factor or would a, it would. Okay. Cause yeah. I was curious, like if it's, if it's circular earrings, would it just be, will these go for, and I'm just going to say an arbitrary number. I have no idea what the pricing would be, but like, say they're both 10 because they're circular earrings, even right. though they're different sizes. Well, I mean, you, you look at the cost for each process. So it's going to cost the same amount to punch them out no mm -hmm. matter what the size is, but yeah. I'm using less material for a smaller piece right. as opposed to a larger piece. Yeah. Um, a smaller earring, we might add, we might do two, two holes on it. And at the bottom, we might punch another hole and then add a bead to it. Mm -hmm. So then it's going to get more expensive because you're adding more steps to it. And that's the reason I ask is because, uh, when people create things, you try to put a price on it. And I know for yeah. like individual pieces or like say painted pieces, um, one of the answers I've gotten in the past is it's the value of your time to do it. And then yeah. also the material that goes into it. But that's still kind of hard because say for an individual piece that isn't mass produced or something that isn't, you you have a market to compare it to. And yeah. it, like that, that's a different, like does that come into factor or is it really... Is it a mixture of time and what the market is, it, it, which makes it, I wish there was something where you could compare, like say paintings go for this much, but there's no way to do that. But say yeah. you get something printed on a shirt. Well, shirts usually go between 15 and $20, you know, that, that, yeah. whereas with jewelry, you can do the same sort of thing, but how do you factor the creative time since they're handmade to market value? Yeah. Well, you know, we, we decide that, we, we have a range of pricing that we have for our earrings, you know, where they start and where they end. And then we can follow because we've been in business so long, mm -hmm. you know, how many earrings we sell at this price point and that price point and that price point. So, you know, we tend to sell more of the lower priced earrings because that's typically what, you know, people you know, we call these like an everyday earring, you know, mm. it's not something you're going to wear to when you get married necessarily mm. or a special event. Same thing like know. with dresses. There are dresses that you can wear out and there are wedding dresses that will go for thousands of dollars. Yes, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so there is going to be a price range and that, that is a huge factor to how we're going to design the earring because we want it to fit into those price ranges, you know, so I'm not going to use sterling silver on this, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to use nickel silver instead because I want to fit it into the price ranges that we have. So, so yes, that's a big part of it. And you had talked about before when you were putting the, you said the stuff was, or had people had seen it evolve over time in the different stores who have been familiar with the brand and the packaging mm -hmm. has changed. 
Um, that's another question is presentation and packaging. Like that's another factor to include. How do you, how do you decide or even come up with the materials and the design for now you're done with it and you're like, well, we got to present it this way in the boxes. Like that's another thing. How do you come up with those ideas or even manage the way that you're packaging it? Do you, do you create it yourself as well? Um, we, we design the packaging. Yes. Um, we have somebody else produces it, but we design it. And, and I think packaging is extremely important and, and it, it also adds a cost to the product too, which yeah. is really tricky because, you know, nobody wants to pay for something they're just going to throw away. Right. Right. But it's also so important because it's, it's, it's holding your product, you know, and, and it's part of the, how it represents itself and sells itself. So, um, so that's been tricky. Um, we actually, because we have two different brands, it's kind of interesting to see how the two different sell really and one, one of them we sell twice as much and i actually do believe it's because people like the packaging better they like the cards better have you ever a b tested that well no i actually i hear it from okay. owners and stuff you know sometimes they want us to take the earrings and switch the packaging you right. know and put it on the other card that's kind of what i'm wondering that's why i'm yeah. saying like if you did that yeah. would you know that it's really the packaging yeah 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 huh. so we we know it's the packaging. Okay. So one thing I just did, I actually just finished um, designing cards and um, with a company. And what I did was I wanted to keep the two brands distinct, um, but I also tried to blend them a little together. So I took similar. So I basically, the one that's more popular, I took a lot of those designs and, and tried to um, kind of impose them on the other one so they look more similar. Mm -hmm. So instead of the brand that is not as popular, you know, I could have gone the other way, right? And made them look that way. But so I basically, um, and actually the the card that's more popular, those used to be um, hand pressed by a printer, a local printer. Oh. Um, what do you call it? Like, um, I think it's hand. Embossed? Yes. Okay. Yes. They used to be hand embossed. So they're on a thicker card and they have, so they have more of like an antique look to them. Yeah. So I basically kind of tried to reproduce that, but with a larger printer because of the cost again, mm. it's so tricky, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, um, and then they have more of a matte finish too than a gloss finish. So I tried to duplicate that with the other one who has and then they had like rounded edges. So I tried to just kind of like soften the other one and make them look a little more similar. And, um, and I actually thought like, um, like sometimes packaging can be way too busy yeah. and distracting from the product. So that was the other thing I did. And, um, you know, I kind of took away some of the, the graphics on it to, you know, so that the product would show up better. And um, so I'm really excited about it. it. It was a long process to kind of get there because it can be, it can be very overwhelming when you're trying to design something, you know, um, that you're going to have like maybe for two years. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can't really change it again for two years. It's a little overwhelming to be like, okay, yeah. you know, and going back and forth. And it was actually, it was it was so chaotic with the company because during the pandemic, the company, the printing company, um, the buyer that I was talking to, her husband got COVID. So they had to oh, quarantine no. the the printing company, people in the factory. Someone got um, COVID. So they had to close the factory. Oh, wow. And so it actually took me five months to get my packaging because like all this stuff was going on. And, no. and so it was really chaotic. It was, it was like unbelievable, but, but I was happy. Everybody was okay. You know, every, everything was fine. And, um, and luckily I, I just like, I had plans. So I had time, um, you know, I didn't need new packaging yet. And mm -hmm. so it, it all kind of worked out, but, um, 
but yeah, it, it's been, it's been very interesting <laughs> is my word that I can say. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's, that's a very polite way of saying it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and have you, uh, you have an online store now too, which you also offer the wholesaling on there. Now, is this something that you yeah. just started or has it always been there? Like how's your online business been going? Um, well, previously the company has, did have a website and I think they basically had the same old website, um, for way too long. Mm -hmm. It looked like even one of the first websites ever (laughs) on the computer was so bad. And so I think they were a bit overwhelmed by trying to convert it over to a new one. Yeah. But I actually decided right away. I was like, I, I believe websites are very important and and so that was my first project. I jumped right into that. And I actually hired a UW student who helped me with my design. Hmm. And since I wanted to change the company name, it was the perfect time to just go ahead, yeah. you know, and revamp everything, right? Just clean it all up and jump into a new website. And so, um, and we use um, Wix.com and I thought it was a very easy process. Yeah. So um, it, it's not, it's not, I wouldn't say it's so great with wholesale. Like most people, you do hear that out there. The wholesale is not set up very well or easily. We've kind of had a few issues with that. Well, because but Wix I, Wix works with the uh, the Square cart, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, do you yeah. think it's a problem with uh, with Square itself, which which most you know handmade creatives use, especially yeah. when they're out in public? But like wholesaling, I guess I never thought of it that way. So, what's what is the problem with the wholesaling? I, on it? We I cannot figure out what the problem is. I've huh. gone back and forth you know, with, with the person who helped me design the website and I cannot figure out, um, we just, we get complaints from store owners wanting to buy wholesale and ordering through the website. And I always try to just be like, I'm very sorry that there's an issue. If you could just email the order to me or call me or Mm -hmm. text me, you know, just any, any other way, (laughs) but through the website. Um, cause it, it just, I have no idea what the problem is, but it's basically like, I think when you go to check out, it's just not letting the, the, you're supposed to log in as a wholesaler and have a password, but it's not letting the person log in. Sometimes once you do log in, it's not giving you the, the wholesale pricing. It's just giving you the retail pricing and the shopping cart. Okay. So I I have no idea. And that's, that's not where my expertise is, it's, you know, that yeah, and, and me, my background is I'm a software developer. And as you're oh. talking, I'm already like looking at it going, okay, what's, what could be happening? So I'm, I'm sitting here talking to you and I'm like, well, let me pull that up. And I get like, that's what people would do is they'd come to me and go, Hey, yeah. this thing's not working. And I'd have to go, okay, let me find out. You know? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hire you to help. Me fix this well, problem. let me, let me do this first. Let me look at, yeah. cause I also, I also have integrated square with most of the stuff that I do. I had not looked at the wholesaling thing. So I'll take a look and see if there's any weird thing that I see there. And before okay. I tell you, like if it's anything where it's like, oh, it's obviously this and something simple, yeah. I'll let you yeah. know. I'll take a look and just see okay. if I can give you a heads up. I can't guarantee that I will, but I'm just saying instantly when you're talking, all of a sudden yeah. I went into my previous job mode and was like pulling it up and stuff. Anyway. The, the, our other issue is with the taxes because- if Oh, the you taxes sell, is hard. Yeah, that's that that yeah. usually you have to get a third party plug in for and that's a, that's horrible. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Especially every- with the new tax laws. Normally what you would yeah. do is you just do it for the zip codes in California. But now yeah. everybody's requiring, uh, like, what is it? It's annex or not annex, nexus. I forget what the actual term is, but all okay. of them are making it because of online shopping. Mm-hmm. All the states are making you do specific codes for them. And truthfully, what needs to happen is the carts themselves need to figure it out. Because this is their job and they're expecting all these people who are using their cart for easy service because they're not developers, they're creators. The carts need to figure out the taxes. So my theory is, is eventually the taxes will be worked out by Square. And if they're not, they should be because that's dumb. Uh, sorry, I got really, so <laughs> it is silly though. It's, it's so frustrating. Yeah, no, the, they need to figure it out is what it amounts to. And you shouldn't have to install third-party services. It's silly. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
rant over. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so is, but that's that's great that you're doing the online uh, the online selling. And have you seen an uptick in that because of the pandemic? It's the one. It's the one positive I'm trying to spin out of this whole thing is that it's really given people the ability to reach out farther and actually participate in online business like they've been meaning to because now we have that time. So have you seen an uptick in it? Well, I don't know about an uptick. Um, (laughs) um, You know, since I haven't owned the business for very long and then I started a new website, it's a little tricky. You're right. I forgot that you just, (laughs) you got it right before. (laughs) But but I do have anytime anyone goes to the old business name, I do have a link. So it goes to my new website. So I wouldn't lose any, anyone along the way. Um, but I would say, you know, like I, I actually just got an order today and yesterday. And so, and when you sell wholesale, it's just really amazing to get a retail order because you sell four items and it's a, it look it looks like a huge order, you know, and it's four items. So, (laughs) so it's quite exciting. And I get, so I do get orders all over the country. And, and to me, I kind of, I, I want, I, I should, I don't know if I should reach out to people, but I really want to know how do they get to my website? <laughs> you yeah. know, like, I don't know. And so, and maybe I was just thinking that's another thing I want to add somehow to my, my shopping cart, like some little thing that says, you know, how did you find us? You know? Mm-hmm. And I, so because I would love to know how people got to my shopping, how, how they got to my website. I have no idea. And I agree. And it's, it's actually, it feels weird and it feels like uh, uh, me personally, because I've kind of been doing more conversational things with people that buy things from me. Um, mm-hmm. And when you first do it, you feel like they're going to be sort of, that's creepy. Why are you talking to me now? But it's like, well, they just bought something for you. Um, yeah. But the one thing that got me over that is when I started cross posting to uh, places like Facebook Marketplace. And when Facebook Marketplace first started out, it was only interacting through messages. Okay. You, you would, uh, people couldn't just click a buy button and get it from you. They would go, is this available? And it used to only be local and they go, when can I pick it up? What time? And you'd like kind of interact with these people. And sometimes I would, uh, people started telling me stories about like, that's the other weird thing about selling these things. People will be like, Oh, my grandmother used to have this game when I was growing up and I loved it reminds me of sitting on her living room floor and I, they'd start telling me things and like having conversations with me and then people would come back and like, I have one person who actually just contacts me every Friday and says, just wanted to pop in and say, hello, that's fantastic. It's somebody who's like out in Iowa or uh, Ohio or something like that. And they buy from me every once in a while and it, it does build a relationship. So when you're mm-hmm. saying you should, if you should ask them, the thing is, is like that it, I, from my experience doing this recently, I used to think that that would be weird, but now I actually interact with some people. I mean, sometimes it is weird and they're just like, leave me alone. And I'm like, okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I would say, yeah, definitely find out. Cause I would be curious to know how they found it. Is it a search engine? Yeah. Was somebody, yeah. did somebody post it or share it on uh, yeah. Facebook? Like I love yeah. this jewelry or I just bought these earrings. They're great. You know, that yeah. sort of stuff. I'd, I mainly just out of curiosity, I say. So I say, yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I need to figure that out. I'm I'm adding it to my list. Yeah, because um, like, like I've been on Instagram for a while and I'm trying to post more, and I I really want to um, kind of educate people about how our product is made because I think it's pretty yeah. cool that we have a hundred different styles and we design them all, you know, and then we make a lot of those components. So I'm trying to get that message out and. You know, I think Instagram is a great way to do that because you could put up a beautiful studio photo, mm-hmm. you know, of the earrings being made. Um, but I feel like my, my reach is not very far, you know. And so and it's like I, I don't know how to connect with people. And um, and, you know, it's hard to tell on Instagram because people could see your post, but then just not like it. Mm-hmm. So you don't know how many people are seeing your post. Right. You can actually, um, if you, do you have your Instagram account set up as a business account? 
Yeah. So yeah. you can go into the insights and you can actually sort by um, posts all the way to like the past year. And then okay. they have, so if you go into the insights, uh, right when you go to your profile, you click on that, okay. open it, and then you can go to your posts and then okay. sort them by, you can even do like the past seven days and it will okay. show you how it, it'll actually show you the reach. People have seen it impressions. Um, even people who went to your profile and then people who clicked on the link in your profile. So it will okay. tell you, it will tell you a lot of stuff. So just, okay. yeah, check that out and then you'll okay. be able to find more. And also I would say um, with the reach, I mean, the more stuff you post, mm -hmm. you know, waiting for the, waiting for the reach and then posting stuff is, you know, seems like you may as well just do it right now and kind of get used to it because when you do have the yeah. reach and you start making things, then you'll, you won't know whether or not it you like it or maybe you could do it differently or test things out like yeah. actually starting from the beginning that's the best time i would just post anything i thought of because nobody was following me <laughs> <laughs> and then i would kind of figure it out because then i'd look at my own profile and go i'm even embarrassed looking at that myself <laughs> you know? right. <laughs> so i would figure that out and test it out live right right <laughs> but yeah it, so the insights will tell you that type of stuff okay. and having the okay. business count have you yeah. done much advertising or promotion that way? Um, I have been trying to figure it out. You know, I think for me, one of the most difficult parts about the past year is that, you know, I had six people working here and mm -hmm. now it's just me. And, and so, you know, I try to connect with other people, but you know, it, it can sometimes be a challenge to do that, right? Because it's like you need to set up a time to do a Zoom call and, you right. know, connect with somebody. But um, so, you know, I'm just kind of learning as I'm going. And when I had my other company, we used to have several people in the office that would help us. So we actually had somebody who did a lot of the marketing for us. And it was cool because I could just be the creative and come up with the creative idea, but then I didn't have to really like follow the analytics, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, 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 or figure out how to connect this and that, you know? And so I know and exactly I, what you mean, because I was the guy that you would have given that to back at the company yeah, I worked for. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, I have connected, like, actually the other day I was all upset because I went to the, my Facebook page and for some reason I don't know how, but my Instagram stuff is not connected now to my Facebook page. And it was yeah. connected every time I posted on Instagram, it was supposed to go directly onto my Facebook page. Yeah. And so now I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got, you know, so I'm a little freaked out now because I'm like, I need to go figure out what happened and why it's not connecting. If and anything, so it's probably as simple as what they do is over a period of time, they basically go, you have to reconnect this again, just to make sure that you're not, you know, yeah. your account has it. Cause if, if you lose, if someone actually steals your Instagram account, they have access to your Facebook account. So they uh, need you to re log in and basically uh, re um, reauthorize it okay. just to make sure that you don't lose both. So okay. that's my guess. Okay. So I would just try that. I'm learning so much from you. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were asking about, I feel like I'm never answering your questions. Oh no, you're doing fine. On these tangents. But, um, so I have tried a little bit of like, um, Instagram marketing stuff. Um, I really want to do the sort of little shopping bag thing. Yeah. Um, where you can kind of see the item, but I, it, I have, I've figured out different steps to it, you know, and it was kind of funny, like it took me forever to figure out how to like, um, do one step. And then as soon as I learned a step, I swear, like Facebook would change a bunch of stuff and redesign mm -hmm. everything. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, I just figured that out. And I'm like, so I, 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 I'm, I'm actually honestly not a big Facebook person, so I'm, I'm really not on there much. Right. And, and I'm a little better with Instagram. I go on that quite a bit, but I, I haven't used as many of the business tools as I should be using. So, you know, I think I tend to be a little bit better with like kind of web stuff. My website, you know, that sort of update is a little easier for me. But, you know, I think that... Um, also, you know, I'm always talking to other friends that have businesses too. And I feel like with the social media stuff, it's always falling down to the bottom of the list. 
mm-hmm. you know, and it's just, it never feels like I have enough time for that. And, but I do think it's partly because I don't always want to make time for it because I That's sometimes actually, yeah. <laughs> like there's not much a pay of a payoff, right? Like, I'd rather go design a new necklace because to me, that's so much more satisfying than, you know, posting something on Instagram and having two people like it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like to me, that's just like, is that, is that worth my time? I don't know. So it becomes a challenge. Yeah. And well, and it becomes too like uh, what things should, because staying in the public eye is still something that is good. Social media is good for But then it's like, are you doing it? it, Like if you put something up where like me personally, I don't necessarily put up things going, I'm selling this now, or here's my, I'll just go, here's the thing I made. Here's, you know, like quick things, like nothing I spend a lot of time on and just to, just to show like I'm doing stuff. And if you're interested, you can find out more on my website and then see more of the stuff there. So it's really more of a way to bring people in. I also use it a lot for outreach. I, I, and advertising wise. Right. And right. that's the thing too, is with, uh, Instagram advertising, it's really done in Facebook. Like you have to yeah. use the Facebook business manager to do, I mean, you can do it on mobile through Instagram, but it's not as intuitive. The, oh, okay. and I it's, and this is such a weird way to say this, but the, <laughs> the Facebook business manager, uh, on mm-hmm. the laptop, is so overwhelming that it's a good way. (laughs) Like it does so much. That's what I'm saying. Like it's really easy on Instagram, but I don't get nearly as many results if I do it through the app. If I do it and like can really drill down my advertising in the Facebook manager, that actually is a lot more helpful. I can really promote to what I want when I want. And I don't do it all the time. And I don't spend a lot of money on it. Like if I do make something that I'm going to advertise. I only spend like $35 a week, uh, okay. you know, okay. like $5 a day. And even then it's like, it doesn't make that cap sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I found it very helpful. I, I would not be this. Nobody would know about this podcast if I didn't do that. That's literally how I started it because I okay. set up an ad to ask people to come on the show. <laughs> okay. Cool. Like that's, I, I didn't go out and find people. I just put yeah. up an ad and said, who wants to be on a show? Yeah. 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 (laughs) So I don't know. And I know a lot of people don't like to spend money on advertising, but I find that strange. It's necessary. Yeah, it really is. And even if it's only like a dollar a day, it's still, I find like, that's kind of, I've, I've dabbled in the like Etsy marketplace advertising. And so I'll just do a little bit just so my ad kind of pops up. Yeah. And um, so I do need to, and that's on my my to do list is to jump back into some Facebook ads because um, I think I I have not done I don't think I've done any with this business, but I've done a little bit in the past with some other businesses, and and um, I think for me again, you know, I'm just kind of limited on my energy and time, and so. Right. I've thought, you know, let me just wait until I can kind of have all my ducks in a row and I kind of figure, figure out what I want to do. I also found, I also, you know, the other thing that was a challenge was last year, you know, at this time, the pandemic starting, I was actually just on the verge of like actually calling retail stores Hmm. and selling them, you know, the product. We had new earrings with 30 new earrings. We had a new brand name. Um, and that week, um, I actually had to stop calling people because this was happening. Right. And so, you know, it was not a good time to be calling and asking for sales when people were like, what is going on? Right. So I had to put a lot of my marketing stuff on hold basically Mm -hmm. for a year. And I also found as the year went on, like there was actually a guy on Instagram who had a pair of our earrings and he would do these funny videos, just like these great characters. And so I reached out to him and I was like, hey, I would love to send you some earrings, some free earrings if you want to, you know, make some videos with them. Because I thought, what a great way to promote our product and, and um, you know, work with somebody And then, and this was almost, I think it was exactly a year ago or pretty close to it. Hmm. Um, 
he was like, he was like, you know what? There's a lot going on right now. And he's like, I'm not doing any funny videos right now on Instagram. And so, and I don't know if you noticed, but you know, things got really quiet last year online, especially into the summer. And, um, you know, and there was a lot going on and there was, you know, um, and so, so that was interesting to experience that, you know, and I just felt like, you know what, I think I need to just kind of put all that stuff on hold right now and kind of, you know, just take a break from it mm-hmm. from, and, and to me, it was nice. Cause then I could take the pressure off myself to be like, Oh, I've got to put up a post and I've got to say something funny and cute and creative yeah. and, or ask an interesting question. You know, it's like there it's um, it takes a lot of work and a lot of planning and thought and, you know, it doesn't always have to take a lot, but sometimes it feels that way. Mm -hmm. And so, and I've just now started posting more on Instagram and I'm starting to kind of get into the, the groove of it, you know, and I want to, I just want to make it a habit. Yeah. Right. Cause I think that's the best way that it can be fun is you make it kind of this habit and then it, then it becomes more creative and more interesting naturally you know, and it becomes part of your, you know, kind of work day. But um, yeah, it's like, you know, there's so many things to do, right? And Mm -hmm. it's like, how do you prioritize all those things? And, and I think it is the beauty of owning a business and running a business because every day is different, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you get to talk to all these people and try different things. And, and so or or go, do things. this was working yesterday. Why isn't it working today? <laughs> exactly. exactly. What happened? So what, where's the problem? Oh, man. And, yeah. and then I have one more thing I'd like to ask you, too, which is, um, do you have anything coming up or anything you'd like to mention or events or products coming out or anything that you'd like to tell people uh, about um, happening in the future? Yes. Um, I have a lot of things I'm trying to work on. Um, One of the most exciting things I think is um, I am working on a bike cart um, that I will be taking over to State Street to sell my jewelry outside. Oh, yeah, and I'm yeah. Um, I I was one of the only vendors that was out on State Street last summer. And because everything was pretty shut down and where were you, know, you where were you uh, doing it at? Um, at the top of of State Street oh, okay. where they used to have the farmers market, but they'd have the vendors that were out there selling art and stuff, handmade. Gotcha. So I went out with another friend and we were there on the weekends and it was so sweet because people would actually thank us for being out there oh. because it was like it just felt like something normal you know, in their life. So, you know, seeing vendors and being able to shop outside. Mm -hmm. So we, did we get a lot of sales? No, (laughs) (laughs) but for me, that was fine because I just loved being outside and talking to people and just interacting. And, you know, for me, it, it, it just felt really nice and really like, I just felt some connection with, uh, Madison. So and you're and, gonna be doing that again this year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm really excited about that. I'm trying to figure out the details and what's happening with the city of Madison and all of that. So it actually cost the permit was zero dollars oh. last year. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people didn't realize that. So it for us it was a win win, right? Yeah. So if we need twenty bucks, you know, it it felt worth it to be outside. Absolutely. And I guess I didn't awesome. know that the permits were, yeah, that they yeah. had done that to the permits. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And then we'll also have um, 24 new ear, um, necklaces this year for the spring. So we're okay. going to have a bunch of necklaces. And um, so that I'm very excited about. And that will be fun. Well, and if people wanted to check that out, where would they go to? They would go to, um, well, we have an Instagram account, Metric Forest Studio. And then we also, that's also our website, metricforestudio.com is our website too. So. Okay. Well, great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank thank you so much for being on the show and thank you for reaching out to me. I'm glad that we got the chance to meet and talk. Yeah.